Hey everyone, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler. And we're a little more than halfway into this series on some popular GED math questions. I hope the videos so far have been a great help to you. And today we're gonna to take a look at functions. So let's get started. We have a question that says, in the function below, what is the value of f of three and what is the value of f of negative four? And so they give you this function f of x equals three times the quantity four x squared minus two x plus two. And so when they ask you what is the value of f of three and f of negative four, really all you're doing is in, in place of x, you're just replacing the value you're looking for. So we're gonna look at f of three first. So anywhere there's really an x, I'm just gonna plug in the value three. So four times three squared minus two times three plus two and all of that times three, all right? So now we need to use order of operations to simplify this down. Um, I'm gonna do inside parentheses, I'm gonna do the exponents first. So three squared is nine, all right? And then in my next step, I'm gonna stay inside parentheses. I'm gonna do multiplication and division and so four times nine is 36, and minus two times three is minus six, and then the plus two is still there, all right? Inside parentheses, then I have no more multiplication or division. I'm gonna do addition and subtraction going left to right. So 36 minus six is 30, and 30 plus two is 32. So I'm left with my final step, three times 32, which is gonna get me 96. So the value of the function when you plug in three is 96. So let's do the same thing, but for negative four, all right? So I'm gonna plug in negative four anywhere there's an X, and I'm gonna go ahead and use order of operations to simplify it down. So within the parentheses or the brackets, I'm gonna use uh, exponents. So negative four squared is negative four times negative four, which is positive 16, and then after that, I have no more exponents. I'm going to go to multiplication, going left to right, staying inside parentheses first, though. So 4 times 16 is 64, and minus 2 times negative 4 is minus 8. Or sorry, it's positive 8, I apologize. Um, and so that's why there's a plus 8. You know, minus, so you're subtracting whatever 2 times negative 4 is, which is negative 8. And if you subtract negative eight, it's the same thing as adding positive eight. So that's why there's a plus eight there. And that plus two just stays there. So keeping inside the brackets, I'm gonna go ahead and add all those numbers together. 64 plus eight is 72, and 72 plus two is 74. And my last step is gonna to be to multiply three times 74, which is gonna give me my final answer of 222. So the value of that function when uh, x is negative four is 222. All right, let's take a look at another example of functions. In the table of values below, what values of x can be used so that the table still represents a function and what values of y can be used? So there's a question mark in the uh, row of x's and there's a question mark in the row of y's. And they're basically asking you kind of like a conceptual question. There's not really any work that's here. It's more of do you understand functions and how to represent functions using tables. And so there's a key piece of information that you need to know in order to you know, correctly answer this question. And that is that in a function, you cannot repeat x values. You can repeat y values, just not the x values. And so, what the question is really asking you, what numbers can be used, you wanna you know, incorporate this, this fact. So realistically for your X values, you can use any number that hasn't already been used for an X value. So anything that's not a one, a three, a four, or an eight, you can use. And then for the Y values, you can pretty much use any value you want to. You know, you can use a two or a five or a four or a 14 again, that's fine, um, or any other new number. Y values can be repeated, X values cannot be repeated, all right? So let's look at one more example on functions. This one asks you the question, which of the following graphs does not represent a function? And so when you're looking at graphs and representing whether they represent functions or not, 
Um, there's literally a quick trick to use, and that trick is it's called the vertical line test. What it says that is says is if you draw a vertical line um, on your graph, um, if that vertical line crosses your graph at more than one point at the same time, then it is not a function. And so let's go ahead and try it out. Let's take a look at drawing a vertical line and kind of, you know, grazing across the graph and see if it crosses more than one point, right? So we have this vertical line. If we were to go ahead and shift it across the whole graph, you see that it doesn't cross the, that red graph at more than one point at the same time, All right? Let's try it for the second one. We have a vertical line. If we brush it across the graph, it looks like it crosses the graph more than one place several different times in that graph. So this really isn't going to be a function. Let's take a look at C and D just to be sure. If I go across the graph C, that's only going to cross the, the red line once at a time. And then same with D, it's close, but it's really only going to cross that graph once at a time. If I go over one more time with that, you can see that it only crosses that red graph once. So knowing that, if I were to look and see which of these the fails the vertical line test, it's going to be pretty simple to see that it's B. Because right there, I have a vertical line that crosses the red graph at two different points. And so it fails the vertical line test, which means that is not a function. There's really several different ways that you can represent functions, whether it's plugging in values for an equation, whether it's looking at a table of values, whether it's looking at graphs. Either way, I hope these examples have really helped you when you come to these questions on the GED math test. Be on the lookout for my next video when I look at some algebra problems. As always, thanks for watching.